Glad to have you back. Now, Lagos State has recorded another first in the judicial system uh, by inaugurating four special courts solely for the prosecution of sexual offences and corruption cases. Yeah, two courts will uh, adjudicate on economic and financial crimes, while the two others will try sexual offences. Now, the Sexual Offences Court is the first of its kind in Nigeria. Governor Akimumi Ambody, while inaugurating the courts, lauded the Chief Justice of Nigeria for initiating it at the federal level. He noted that the establishment of the courts would facilitate expeditious hearing and trial of sexual and financial related crimes. Well, joining us to discuss this is the chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association, Ikeja Chapter, Adishino Ogunlano. Good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, and Good morning. also joining us via Skype is Oluwa Shion Ayodeji, Oshowobi founder, Stand to End Rape Initiative. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. All right, let's start with you. Uh, uh, how uh, important is this uh, that the government is putting this in place in the state at this time to you know, expedite um, some hearings of special cases like sexual assault and uh, economic um, Well, it, the, the question is answered already. It's important. Mm -hmm. I think the government is being responsive to data, statistics that's so blatant about the increase in the and that particular line of um, criminal conduct mm. of uh, sexual offenses and um, uh, criminal offenses of financial nature. And uh, in trying to specialize the courts, uh, it's trying to take it away from the general run of adjudication and uh, to now classify it a worthy of mm. special interest. Mm. All right, uh, uh, let, let me bring you in here, Ayodeji Oshobi. Uh, I know you've been, you, you're the founder of Stand to End Rape. We have two courts now uh, specifically allocated to sexual offenses and sexual related uh, offenses, as the case may be. Now, from your, the standpoint of your organization and what you stand for, how would this assist yes. you directly? I think it's an important initiative. It's actually long overdue uh, because there are times where we have cases in court and they take as long as three years or sometimes five years um, to, to get justice for those cases. So I think having a court set aside to try issues of sexual violence is very, very important. It means that when a case gets to court, it's not trialed like other cases. Um, there is a very faster and smoother process to it. And even survivors will feel very safe you know, when, when they come to court because sometimes they don't like to come to court um, because they believe that the normal courts, they try every kind of case. And so their security or their privacy is not really respected. But with these special courts, more survivors would be very happy and very comfortable um, to come to court and be assured that their case will receive very speedy justice. Now, Yadeji, some could say that uh, there might not be any difference at the end of the day, especially uh, when you look at the two courts that would be for sexual uh, uh, cases because uh, the prosecutors, defense lawyers, and even the judges uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be trained specially for them to hear this. And it's not that the laws of the land uh, will be changed to, for them to you know, specially give attention to some of these this cases. Do you believe so too? Um, I can understand their, um, you know, I can understand their point of view. Um, I think from what I'm going to draw from what you have said is that it's actually important that Lagos State Government takes action to actually train these judges on responding to cases of sexual violence. Um, the laws are there. They are key parts of the laws that can actually get justice. So the things of evidence and um, witness accounts and things like that, they are standards. They can't change. They need to be there. But what this court is hoping to do, um, I believe that's what it's trying to achieve, is to ensure that once cases come in to the court, it is speedy. So we know that we're only attending to so and so case, as against case of robbery and murder and attempted murder, kidnap and sexual violence and other cases. It's, it's just for this particular case. So perhaps, I'm very hopeful that it will make a difference. It will make things faster when it comes to getting justice. It might not change immediately, maybe the first three months or six months or one year because it's a new court, it's a new innovation. They have to test run, make mistakes, and learn from their mistakes. But I believe on the long run, 
I'm not hoping that I would have to. The, the essence of creating this is to escalate it to other parts of the state and the country. So this is the start to help us understand the process, learn from our mistakes, and then create other courts that would work across Nigeria. Okay. So yes, I'm hopeful things will change. All right, let, let me bring Adishina in here. Now, at the inception of this administration in, in 2015, the president, uh, Buhari, made the move to uh, call for the establishment of special courts for corruption. Mm -hmm. And now this is the first we're having so far in, in Lagos State. But the lawyers, like she said, the lawyers that will be, you know, arguing the cases and judges, they're still the Nigerian, you know, people from the pool, as the case may be. What would be different about the approach to uh, uh, corruption in this case, with this court set up? Oh, well, let, let me first say one appreciates government in trying to live to its chiefest responsibility security of lives, limbs, and properties. And in trying to do so, they've tried to involve the judiciary. At any rate, the judiciary is part of the government. Uh, having said this, the fundamental problem with, um, as I see it, with the special courts was one, jurisprudential, and then uh, two, and uh, capacity. The one that's jurisprudential is this. When you set up a special court, it's likely, most likely, that in fact, the judge, or whoever is going to be the adjudicator, is already indoctrinated on a hang-hang attitude. It's really a special court. So you are more or less set up to be a hanging judge because it's set up uh, with a view in mind to achieve a particular purpose. Mm. So if, if, if a judge does not warn himself deliberately, especially that no, in spite of it being classified as a special court, I should not go overboard in trying to join the common perception of uh, conviction. You know, there's a common perception of conviction as different from a judicial perception or a loyalty perception of conviction. That's one, and that's very, very important because you are specially trained. There could be an unholy romance between the executive and then the judicial officers in training when you come together. Generally, prosecutors, especially what they call them sitting prosecutors, and the magistrates or the presiding judges, over time, you tend to become like a, a, a peer, a tag team against the defense, whereas the judge is supposed to be an impartial arbiter between the two sides. And from experience, I've, been, I, I, I've, been, I've never prosecuted before, but I've been defending. You tend to see judges leaning backwards to accommodate police prosecutors, to accommodate state counsel, and even someone give excuses for them and give them leeway so maybe to rearrange their cases, which is not given to the defense. Okay. Now, okay, secondly, which is important, is about quantum. Mm. Quantum is important because now um, these courts are set up. They are not additional courts. Mm. Um, when, when, when my Lord Honorable Chief Judge of Lagos State was reading her speech, she was saying that even at the high courts alone, presently we have about 600 sexual related offenses like rape and all that kind of a thing. So you set up two courts and transfer all these, court, these cases from all these various courts and pack it mm. in just two courts. Well, they're going to be bogged down. All right. Okay, let's quickly uh, ask Ayodeji another question before we let her go. Uh, I, uh, now, with your run-ins with some victims of uh, sexual uh, crimes, uh, how difficult have you discovered it is, you know, to build evidence, especially when taking such cases to court uh, to get a conviction? Okay, it's really difficult because most times when sexual experience occur, the first thing that appears to the survivor is I need to wash of the death and, and the pain and everything from my body. And then they go to have a wash and you know, they report to you maybe two weeks after or a month after the incident and you take them to the hospital. For some people, they are still able to find um, some sort of evidence um, on, in their bodies. But for some other people, there is no evidence. And that's why I like the fact that we have a forensic um, examination, kind of hospital, quote and unquote, at the moment for examination. Um, we haven't tried it. 
and because we haven't had a case recently where survivors have had two weeks in between or a month in between their cases, these days our survivors come immediately after the case um, for us to be able to get medical evidence because we always say it, that we need you to help us to get justice. We need that medical evidence um, to, to prove it in court. So in cases where they come forward in good time, we're able to get the evidence. But in times where they can't come, they don't come up in time, we sometimes lose the evidence and then we are just going to court on the account of what they say. And sometimes uh, the defense counsel can be so unkind to the survivors, asking them questions that would demean um, their personalities and question what they were wearing or where they were, or try to prove their stories wrong. You know, so it's, it's, it's sometimes good and it's, it's most times actually bad. But we try as much as possible to get um, evidence for the court. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ayodeji Oshobi, for joining us. You're the founder of uh, Stand to End Rape. Thank you very much. Now, thank let me come back to you, uh, Additional. The, the issue of appeals is, is one of the things that uh, we, because we try to look at the technicalities and, and all of that success of the courts here. Now, when it comes to the Supreme uh, Court, that is the only place where you can go beyond. Mm. And when it, it, uh, someone is convicted at this special court, for instance, and there's going to be an appeal, it's certainly going to go back to the regular courts one way or the other. Can, yeah. can you make us understand how that is going to really uh, not be as successful as Nigerians would expect? I, I don't really see that much of a concern. Okay. Usually, um, because of the hierarchical um, nature of our courts, one can easily liken it to the educational education paradigm. When you have the primary school, you have the secondary school, you have the uh, tertiary. Usually, the foundation is important. It's what happens most, the outcome of a case usually is determined at how it's done at the first court of trial. It's mm. quite important. And so if you get it right at the first court, court of first instance, you get it right. Either way, whether as a defense, either as a prosecution, whether somebody could exercise his or a right of appeal. Usually, when the judge has done the good job, prosecution has done the good job, generally appeals are not allowed. That is, that is allowed, you are not successful. But if it's not been so well done, and maybe a bit of sentiment that come in, like I would say the body judge case for an instance, the gentleman lost at the high court, the gentleman lost at the court of appeal, at the Supreme Court, he won. But lawyers who have followed the case diligently, without emotion, will know that uh, whatever public sentiment could be in that case, strictly speaking, legally, uh, it's not really going to end up in success for the prosecution and Supreme Court vindicated that. Yes, the special court, as far as I'm concerned, there is good initiative. If, if, if the number of courts are increased. In Lagos State, I keep saying it as a leader of the bar that you can't have a city of almost 20 million people and you have only 55 high courts and only 135 or 131 magistrate courts. Simply impossible. Bring the best technology, the sheer volume of people. And you know, you are talking of an industrial city, yeah. you are talking of a cosmopolitan city, we are talking of what? Lagos is Nigeria. And you have this. So Lagos needs at least 200 high courts, about 500 magistrate courts, and all that. But the problem is that, from I understand as an, as an insider now, that we are, Lagos State is even willing. But the federal government, because of our peculiar form of federalism, you really don't have a Lagos State judiciary. You only have a judiciary for Lagos, Lagos State. State. Mm. Abuja is which controls all courts in Nigeria. So when Lagos says, I need like 20 courts, uh, the National Judicial Council can give them only three. Or give only two. So that's a problem. Like I said, if my Lord had informed that we have our 600 
cases at the high court alone, and you have designated only two courts, now, special courts, and you are going to take all these, withdraw all these other cases, mm -hmm. just from all these courts, and these two courts, with only two judges or two magistrates, what's going to happen? And then you're even looking at, yes. uh, will there be a time frame set, really, for cases to be uh, concluded? Because that is another issue. If you, uh, if you, tr you know how co uh, case cases are delayed naturally in Nigeria with so many motions that could be filed in between. Oh, I beg to disagree. I beg to disagree. Naturally. I beg to disagree. Yeah, the cases but commonly. Are, no, I wish they commonly. Like, cases in why, why is, why is it? lasted for years. Yes, yes. Why you uh -huh. say, why so you, we are used to it. Yes, why, why you say commonly? <laughs> now, but whereas, we, when we look at the technique of law okay. and the system of law, mm. you, it's, it's, not, it's not, the law does not make it uh, automatic that because somebody is arranged for a heinous crime, automatically he must be convicted. You go through the due, the due process. I agree that certain lawyers tend to make the law an ass and all that kind of thing. And these are things that the NBA is beginning to look at, the discipline and sanction of lawyers, so that you do not become a clog in the administration of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of justice. So, so the, 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 the issue of time frame again may raise constitutional issues that mm -hmm. although it's been done in electoral matters and that this one or 80 days something yes. mm -hmm. but as politicians and lawyers have come to realize sometimes you work quite injust uh, injustice to people uh, you know the recent case about four years ago about somebody winning in urban or something mm -hmm. and urban corrosion or something mm -hmm. simply because when you come to court what they were assembled the matter to prosecute is more than 80 days even though it will look on the merit that the fellow had a good case mm -hmm. but because of a fluxion of time created by legislation that case had to be truncated and that's not so fair now Maybe you can manage that with a uh, political, but when it comes to the life and liberty of a person, and you now rush the court, and so when the defendant or the prosecution mm -hmm. even wants to uh, do more, they just say, no, look at time, we can't wait, can't wait. You have to hurry, you have to hurry. I think it's more of an ethical thing on the part of the administrators and operators of the legal system. I'm mm -hmm. talking of the bench, yeah. I'm talking of the lawyers. Mm -hmm. The judges should be up and doing more of work, less of vacation less of excuses of not sitting and then the lawyers they should be they should remember that you are called learned members of the noble profession uh, noble profession you are, sub, you are supposed to win squarely you are supposed to lose decently you are not to win or lose by hook or by crook and that's what many lawyers do you can just get a brief even prosecutors from persecution you want to You've, you've seen that this case, many of the cases refer to court. I'm talking from my experience, mm -hmm. and I've been living for 20 years. That you find out that many of the cases ought not to go to court at all. Oh. That's why the EFCC loses cases. Not that uh, the people are actually that innocent, but the loose sense have not technical been tidy. Mm -hmm. Technic not technicalities. Mm -hmm. the, there's a DPP, there's an in house um, assessment. Okay. But if you are under political pressure or social pressure, that I must choose, I must, okay. I, must, um, I must fight this case to court. Let me give you a very famous case, which I participated in, in year 2000, the Guru Maharaj murder case. Mm -hmm. He ought not to have gone to court at all for murder. But because this fellow was not popular, and there's a lot of scandal, somebody was found dead in his uh, ashram or something, he rushed to court. At best, it could have been a case for affray or some of those kind of things, but no assault, but not murder. After all the sensation, mm. the fellow was freed. And then said, ah, God will judge you. But clearly, it was more of sensation mm. and scandalization of a, of a person who's not particularly loved in the religious community because of his peculiar religious something. So that's what happens all over and all over. It, 70 percent or at least 60 percent of cases taken to court have not been properly investigated. Or there are doubts, even the mass of the a good prosecutor that can I swing this the case? The public perception can never win a case in court. No, no, no. And that's why some people now blame judges and lawyers. Yeah, lawyers can turn black to white. Mm -hmm. Ah, somebody ah we caught him now. Okay, look at the this fellow, that fellow, the cannibal. OG. Clifford uh, OG. Clifford OG. Clifford OG case. Hey, we found him. I handled that matter. When we got to court, no Nigerian was willing to come up. As a witness. Testify against him. Mm. So what what do you do? There's nothing. Nobody after all the hoopla, hey, find him, hey, hey. all the mob that lynched him. The police could not even present one person.
Mm. Okay, uh, the, on the issue, b before we go now, on the issue of uh, the sexual offenses. Now, w the IODG that we interviewed earlier yes. was saying, was talking about uh, cooperation from victims of uh, sexual abuse generally. Now, when it comes to a special court, is there going to be more cooperation from these people those who are said to be victims of rape, would there, would there be a, a special arrangement for them where they can cooperate better than the regular court? No, no, I, no, I, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. The only thing is that maybe you, you do, the lawyer, the defense and um, prosecution mm. could just work on their emotions that way. This court is specially set up by government because government cares for you. Government has identified the ramp. I, won't, I, don't, I don't know whether there's this English rampancy that, that this, this kind of thing has become so rampant and government is interested. They set up this court. They don't do any other thing here than to handle matters of your nature. And there's nothing government can do if you don't help government by coming forward. I see government also has even set up in Lagos a first class, world class DNA center and mm. all that kind yeah, of forensic thing. Center. Mm. So just forensic center and then when you come here, it's your type. Not uh, people doing land case will be watching you. People doing um, contract or measure matter will be looking at you. No, it's just your, 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 your fellow victims like this. So at that level, but the courts are not going to, uh, because it's a special court, uh, will now give undue advantage or on due coverage or the judge is not supposed to be emotional sentimental mm. if not mm. you go to appeal the cases will be overturned mm. and then you are back to square one all right we have to leave you here now yes. uh, thank you very much Adeshina Ogunlano the you. chairman Bye. of Nigeria Bar Association Ikeja thank you so much thank you so much thank, thank you for coming Bye.